And just coming into the studio here are three estimable gentlemen. Senator Jack Tower of Texas. Jack, how are you? And Congressman Hale Boggs, the whip of the House, and Representative Jerry Ford of Michigan. And as soon as we get them distributed here, I would like to talk to them. Do we have time, Russ? Yes, you do, Robert. Go right ahead. Well, I couldn't help but think it was unfortunate that this happened in Texas because it is so contrary. Of course, it's contrary to the whole spirit of all 50 states. But Texas particularly, that is so uh, open-hearted in its hospitality usually with a couple of regrettable recent uh, exceptions before the president was assassinated. As a matter of fact, Bob, I think they said this is one of the, one of the warmest receptions that the president had had in any of his travels over the country, the we've, reception that he had in Texas. We've been told that Mrs. Connolly, the wife of the governor, had just turned around and said something to the effect that you must admit Dallas is very warm in its greeting today or some such thing. It is. It is a friendly city. And it normally, uh, normally is, of course, no blame whatever attaches either to the state or the city, but it is unfortunate that, unfortunate that it had to happen at all. Uh, Congressman Boggs, you were uh, very close to the president. This must have been particularly hard for you, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Bob. Uh, I uh, still uh, am like uh, so many other Americans. I uh, find myself uh, uh, not believing it uh, altogether. I was with the... Speaker McCormick uh, most of the afternoon yesterday, and various members would come in, and Congressman Albert, the majority leader, and former Speaker Martin, and minority leader Halleck, and many others. And I found uh, most of us unable to believe it, particularly the Speaker, who is now a second in the line of succession under the laws of our country. Uh, but of course, it has happened, and uh, we have to. Uh, turn to the affairs of government and uh, uh, unite our country. Uh, uh, the new president, President Johnson, last night uh, in meeting with the, uh, the bipartisan leaders of Congress, uh, or the leaders of both parties, I should say, uh, stressed the fact that uh, in periods of strain such as this, that uh, it's vital that we uh, move together as much as we possibly can. And this is a great strain on the American system. We, The one thing that never crosses our mind is that uh, we shall assassinate a public official. In other lands, in other places, uh, uh, this must always live with a man in public office. But I, I'm sure it's never crossed the mind of Senator Tower, who was a... a United States Senator, or Gerald Ford, who is a congressman of the United States, a representative of the United States, and it's never crossed my mind. And I know that it seldom, if ever, crossed the mind of President Kennedy. He looked upon uh, security measures as uh, sort of an unnecessary uh, thing. And uh, incidentally, I might say to you that uh, uh, Speaker McCormick, who is now second in line, as I said a moment ago, one of his first reactions yesterday was, why is a Secret Service man in here? And uh, all the way out to the airport to meet the, the body of the president, uh, he was complaining about it. And I finally said, uh, Mr. Speaker, it won't do you any good to complain. They'll be with you now as long as you're in the well, Representative Boggs, now to get back for just a moment, as the Speaker's assistant in the House, you were awfully close to him. Some of us were concerned yesterday about the Speaker, about how he'd take this. I didn't, uh, I didn't see him uh, yesterday. <laughs> is the Speaker all right from what you said? I judge speaker's, he is. The Speaker's fine. Uh, he had had a, a bad week, as you know, Bob. His brother died last uh, Sunday, and... Uh, he had just returned to Washington uh, after the funeral of his brother, which was on Wednesday. But he looks well. His, uh, he's shocked, just as all of us are. But I, I must say that I think he's in fine health. And as I said a moment ago, he's uh, he's uh, second in succession. I, I don't think he realizes that, because uh, that in itself is an awesome responsibility. I cannot imagine the speaker 
moving around slowly enough so Secret Service men, with all due respect to the alacrity of our Secret Service men, so they can keep up with him. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> he doesn't want him around. <laughs> Uh, Representative Ford, this is Representative Gerald Ford of Michigan. Uh, you have been uh, quite a, a force in Republican politics in the House since the beginning of this session. What uh, do you think? Uh, what do you think the effect of this will have on uh, on the Republican organization in the House? It's something we haven't talked about at all yet. Well, of course, uh, Bob, we haven't, uh, as a Republican leadership, uh, sat down and analyzed the situation. As a matter of fact, I talked to Charlie Halleck yesterday afternoon, and uh, it was the consensus among all of us that uh, politics should be the last thing we should discuss at that very tragic hour. Inevitably, however... Uh, there will be a legislative program, as uh, Congressman Boggs uh, has uh, indicated. Uh, it will then be the responsibility of the minority and the majority to uh, uh, work out what uh, the program will be and what the opposition will do. I would say that the minority, the Republicans, will make a maximum effort uh, without any sacrificing of principles uh, to cooperate, to help and assist the uh, new president and the Democratic leadership in the House and in the Senate. Uh, it's, it's so difficult to be specific because uh, uh, nobody's had their mind or their thought uh, uh, on what the legislative schedule will be. As a matter of fact, I am rather sure, uh, Hale, that we'll probably have a minimum of activity for... Uh, what, a week or thereabouts? It's uh, hard to say. That's what I wanted to ask all three of you gentlemen. As a matter of fact, this came as such a shock to all of you up there. Don't you uh, really need a few moments to collect yourselves before you can buckle down to work again? That would be my reaction, but uh, there are certain things, uh, one on Monday, that uh, is absolutely essential to uh, uh, consider and approve. It's the continuing resolution for the... Uh, uh, appropriation bills that have not yet been enacted into law. This is something that must be done. Well, we have to do well, it. That's a beautiful illustration of something we've been trying to say here. The president and all the rest of you people have the, I'm sure, unhappy job of uh, keeping the government going no matter what happens. And the uh, this continuing resolution you speak about for the benefit of our listeners would allow appropriations for the various government departments for whom specific bills have not yet been passed Correct. would allow their money to continue until uh, specific legislation can be put through. And without that money, they are out of business. Obviously, we can't slam on the brakes of the government. And so uh, there is work to be done. I suppose, Senator Tower, the same thing applies in the Senate, doesn't it? Yes, uh, of course, I can't speak for the, for the Senate leadership. I can't even speak for the minority leadership of the Senate. But uh, we still have a job to do. I think the the great characteristic of our American system is, is is the order and stability and the continuity of it. It keeps going on and on. And uh, we must, of course, uh, be about the people's business, even in a time of great national tragedy. Well, thank you very much, all three of you gentlemen. Senator Tower of Texas, Representative Boggs of Louisiana, and Representative Ford of Michigan. And now I've just been told that we uh, should call in if we can get him, Robert Goralski at the White House. Vice President, I'm sorry, President Lyndon Johnson is now meeting with uh, Secretary of State yeah. Dean Rusk in the Executive Office Building. The President, looking very somber-faced, has just stepped across to the Executive um, Office Building across Executive Avenue, walking at a very brisk pace. He is expected to confer with Secretary of State Rusk for another 15 or 20 minutes, and then a new appointment has been added to his schedule. At 10.15, a little more than a half hour from now, he'll be meeting again with Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara. One of his first meetings yesterday here at the White House as President of the United States was with the Defense Secretary. Can you hear me, Bob? Yeah, I'm here. That's the story here from the White House. Uh, Bob McCormick, can you hear me? 
Yes, I'm sorry. I'm having a little trouble with my buttons here. Uh, yes, thanks very much, Robert. Uh, you people have just heard the rather astonishing news, to us at least astonishing, that uh, Senator Tower of Texas received so many abusive telephone calls after this happened that as a, as a precautionary measure, he moved his family out of his Washington home. Uh, we had not up to that time had uh, any indication that the emotional response had vented itself in that special direction. Senator Tower said that the first reflex of a good many people seemed to be to blame the assassination of President Kennedy on the radical right in Texas, which Senator Tower emphasized he does not represent nor belong to nor in any way sympathize with. But... Uh, 